Hey, what's up everybody? This is Perry from Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Brooklyn Bowl today with the guys in American football. This is fucking awesome. Seminole Midwestern rock band. I prefer legendary. Legendary? No, I just, I'm trying to figure out which one makes me feel less old. Okay. <laughs> How about Dude, old? We're, we're old. It's just, yeah, it is what it is, cool. man. Yeah. It is what it is. Well, well, I'm so glad you guys had a minute to take the time to talk to us. Yeah. Um, congrats on reuniting and inspiring an entire third wave of bands that it's consider you gods <laughs> the uh we just our joke is that everybody goes through high school once and they uh, if they find the album it like relates to them so, totally yeah. yeah i saw the funniest meme the other day it's the it's the ep1 album cover mm. with the same font and it just says i had a really bad time in 10th grade that's it yeah <laughs> <Like> <laughs> sums it up we could have we did that's no music even just yeah you guys started this band at a time that is so different from now so I'm kind of, mm -hmm. I guess one of my first questions is going to be, how much does it translate? Like, how much of the gear that you would have been playing back then is still with you, or is it totally different? I mean, different? totally different. Okay. We were, yeah. I mean, we're laughing since we've been asked to do this. Uh, like, we, we didn't, I didn't own a guitar when this band recorded the record. I think the drummer Steve had one, or the other Steve had one, so we borrowed, you know, guitars. I didn't, I didn't have an amp. <laughs> and we just borrowed. That's how we ended up playing all these Fenders forever. It's like, sure. You know, where it was like uh, the studio had a Fender Twin, and it was a total upgrade from whatever PV <laughs> something. You know, one speaker, one by ten there, whatever we were playing. So yeah, we, it was never there was no gear involved. We had, you know, I don't even know. Um, we probably had like one guitar cable between us and one tuner between us. Just, yeah. We're doing so, a band. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to learn how to play the instruments. I guess. Yeah. So did that kind of um, influence how you? came into your style of playing, which is obviously a little different than most people. You do a lot of alternate tunings. Yeah. You know, we just did a rundown with um, Yvette from Covet. Oh, geez. And yeah, she that's... is a huge fan, obviously. And she plays almost exclusively in the American football tuning. Okay. Um, I think she just kind of like, when she was learning guitar, was learning those songs. Right. It's like, okay, That cool. was like yeah. how she just, you know, the same way like I was trying to learn uh, Enter Sandman or something. She was like trying to learn that and that like, so that's her base, so now she's like, she took it in the ranch. She's, she's incredible, yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then, I mean, there's a whole school of other bands doing, you know, yeah, it's, I guess, expounding upon what you kind of stumbled into, I suppose. Yeah, right? I mean, we did kind of just fall into it. Uh, I was playing, I was playing drums and cap and jazz, and our guitar player, Victor Villarreal, gotta give him a shout out for guitar stuff. Uh, just like a total music weirdo genius, had his own style, like, you know, holding the pick and playing with these two, like he took some classical guitar. And was like once he started switching tunings, you know, we were all kind of like, oh, that's, oh, that's fun. That's yeah, yeah well, that's even more. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so how many different tunings are you guys running through? I'm, I guess you have to build your set list around we song do, blocks, we have, right? Uh, our <laughs> guitar tech mic on his own is. Uh, we have to run every idea past him because he's like, yes, that's possible. No, that's not possible. Right. I mean, we have, we each have three guitars on tour with us. Um, and it seems like we need more. Just every song is a different tuning. I mean, literally, every, and every song is different between Steve and I. So, you oh, know. you guys are even in different tunings from, from each other. One Absolutely, another. they have Holy nothing. Okay. Sometimes they have nothing in common. It's not even like oh, just you know, it's dead dead. But you know, it's mm. it's it's all over the place. Yeah, I, different capos, <laughs> different everything. How do you, man? That must be so confusing. Totally an accident. I mean, that's the that's the dumbest idea ever to start bands like that because it's it's just like well, what who has what demo on their phone. And then you at the after you have to go back and decipher what the tune is. So when you're recording so. it, I'm, I bet you're writing down. Uh, this is what I was tuned to at the time. I, I do. I start every demo with uh, I put my phone down and, and whatever guitar I'm holding, I just go. Well, I'll turn it up and crazy or whatever. But uh, I just I just go through all the strings. So you can. Brilliant. And if it's on capo, I'm like, this is what this sounds like on the fourth capo, you know. Yeah, fourth yeah. interesting. Yeah, so. yeah, Mike was joking earlier that you guys have more tunings than songs. <laughs> oh, that doesn't even make sense, but that's a great joke. I like that. That's a pretty good joke. Well, speaking of guitars, um, <laughs> I've seen you play a lot of different tellies, um, deluxes and stuff like that. Uh, did you ever get your, um, what was that thing called? A telesonic back? Telesonic, no, it was stolen? No, yeah. I mean, that's part of the story of all these, uh, the three guitars I have with me. Uh, uh, Telesonic was stolen on my garage, and I loved it, and I replaced it, and it's maybe, I don't know, I don't love it as much, maybe it was just... It's not the right the one. The other one had like these locking, you know, tuning pegs that I was fond of, I know I could do it again. Uh, and then there was a, uh, my other guitar, like, let's see, it's like a, some sort of Telecaster reissue something or something, but I had like the American-made nice version of it, and it was stolen as well, so Bummer. I didn't have the money, I replaced it with 
Allah. What? The worst version of the same guitar, but sure, sure. Significantly worse. Every night I think about it, it makes me mad. Man, I mean, for the most part, tellies do a telly thing. You know, you're yeah. gonna get a very clean. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, sound. that's. It's still yeah. like I couldn't even imagine picking up another brand, and right. like, you know, what I mean, like Fender, like takes I think care the of scale it. length is what really did it for me with Fender. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I had been traditionally playing the shorter scale, like a Gibson scale guitars, mm -hmm. and the first time I played Fender, I'm like, damn, this feels it great. Kinda, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. The tension is oh, really, yeah. really yeah. good. Well, one thing that's weird about those Telesonics is they were like a Fender scale, or a Gibson scale, yeah. and they had like the Duo Jet pickups, yeah. and it was chambered, but it didn't have the hole in it, right? Like a, like no a thin F line? Yeah, there's none of that, yeah, yeah. How, sonically, how was that different than just the you standard know, it was Tele? The first sort of, I, it was a, my, like the first real guitar I got, and it was always, it was definitely not as lively, but it was, uh, it almost felt like more like an acoustic in a way that I, in, you know what I mean? Surely so like, the tension must have been a little bit lighter. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Totally, I mean, it's yeah. like kind of loose and just, it just felt kind of like small and nice and easy to play. Um, it still worked in the set sort of on like a couple finger pick songs or anything. Sure. Now, with this guy, this is, I guess, what you'd call your number one. This is my number one. And the same, the same time, uh, those guitars were stolen, uh, I'm friends with uh, Joe and Fall Out Boy. Literally, like two days later, came down. I was like, "Oh, he's like backstage at his show, and it's like, you got your stuff stolen. You should take this." Like Fender just gave him this, and it's Rules. better than any guitar I have. I you don't know. Yeah, Fender, you maybe need to send these guys some. No, gear. They, Fender's great. They, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't. Know, they didn't send me this, but they sent me. You know, sure. they're taking care of me. Like, right? That rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, it's got uh, hot rails in it, which is something different than it was probably came with stock, right? Yeah, I'm not. I think. I think he like gave him his specs that he wanted, oh. and then they just, just gave him a guitar. Well, it worked for me because it was free at the time, and I needed a guitar like a week later. So yeah, that rolls. Um, yeah, but I, I, it plays great. It's. Uh, Are you spending most of the time split between yeah, the pickups? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I mean, uh, that's sort of part of like. I mean, that's what if when we get to pedals and stuff like the band, like the LP one or whatever. Like, uh, dude, we didn't have any pedals at all. And so we just kind of, we're just like riding, you know, this, like, yeah. we would do a pass of the song. We did like essentially live, you know, together in a room, but we're like, oh my God, we don't have a bass player. Everything's so skinny and thin and whatever. So we went back and doubled everything, but we would just put it, the other pickup the and yeah. then we're like, let's do this one. And then at the end, it's just like chorus and you're like, is that a, an effect or is it, it's just, you know, uh, I don't know. It's like the reverse way of achieving the, the effect that you hear or something. But yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, so what other guitars do you have out on the road with you? Uh, so this is the one that replaced, yeah, Telecaster Custom. Uh, again, I don't know specs or techs. I go to a nice store that's called Chicago Music Exchange. I've heard, I think in I've heard Chicago, of it. It's, Okay, <laughs> I don't know. I really, yeah, I'm, I'm just how little I know about guitars. All I know is I'm like, this place is so fun. Um, yeah, it is so fun. Yeah, it's the best. It's like 10 minutes from my house, and everybody there is always the nicest. So, yeah, uh, yeah you know, like once every couple of years, I just... Finally pick something out I like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, Again, with the Hot Rails, that's something that just works for you. That's this thing? Uh, that's or this that's, DeMarco. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's, I'm so hmm. ignorant. It's working no. for me currently. Hey, if it sounds yeah, good, it yeah. sounds good, man. Yeah. And then beyond that, is this... That's the uh, that's the Telesonic, yeah. Uh, yeah, I bought another one and I uh, found it in Texas. I was oh, convinced cool. also it was the one that was stolen from me. It was like months or whatever later. And I was like, I think I is tracked it? it down. It's not. It's no, not? No, yeah, okay. Interesting. Yeah. But, yeah, these are yeah. so weird because it's got the wraparound bridge, which mm -hmm. is like a Gibson. The scale length is shorter, and then these like duo, uh, duo jet or mm -hmm. pickups or whatever, they're like Gretchy. I think yeah, they're they pickups. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, how, what how weird would this little... compare tonally? Uh, like, it's is... just smaller. This is gonna. This is brighter and shoots out a little more. This is like it's pretty, in a way that I like. It's like dead. Like it's sort of like like I said like. It's quieter, and uh, I just feel like I'm t in total control. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool, man. Yeah. These are hard to come by. You rarely see these. That's why I, I think uh, they. Yeah, they stopped making them. Yeah. In, I don't know, '99 or something. Yeah, but yeah. Super interesting. Right on. So I noticed um, you guys aren't using compression, which is something that I would absolutely have assumed you would have on your board. You You're probably good. should. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, it kind of tightens up the. Cl you yeah. guys play such clean. Yes. You know, the bass line is very, very clean, so unlike a lot of rock bands or something like that that are yeah. covering stuff up with distortion or getting a little compression from distortion, you don't have any of that. So are you having to compensate because of weird tunings with the strings and gauges? Well, that's, uh, you know, again, guitar tech mic. Yeah, each song, uh, you know, we the, the guitars are, are uh, paired with songs uh, based on gauge so and how they play. This. And like this, uh, whatever songs I was playing over here, I was getting this caught in the little ashtray thing, and Mike just like, 
cut it off and filed it yeah, down. Uh, so yeah, now yeah. it's you know That's like handy. wherever um yeah whatever I was feeling from this pickup I was I was gravitating more towards it. Um, yeah, the, the the open tuning is such like a it's just like it's just making shit ring in such a it's just have it's like having a pedal on that's not on yet so then like for real we didn't really get into any pedals until the reunion stuff and we're like oh we kind of want to make the dreamy part even dreamier yeah, yeah. we never thought about it before sure. but like okay because it's already kind of doing that by doubling and tuning right. and stuff so and the beautiful thing about an open tuning is like you can't really hit a wrong note oh it's, <laughs> it's unbelievable it's yeah great. it's yeah, really hard that. to miss yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so all right i guess um amps i've known you traditionally to play big clean fenders on. yeah you got deluxes on this run yeah we're trying just to like uh simplify a little bit and get them smaller also we're just starting i'm using like monitors now so like it's kind of like a it's my preferred setup of mine currently so yeah we're with this is the first run to see if we we thought maybe they'd have to like drive them too much to get where we wanted but they, they sound great they're at three and a half currently and they sound clean and lush and awesome deluxes will scare you how loud they yeah, are and they're, they're, before they they, break up. i'm yeah. like a big fan of this yeah. yeah yeah they're a great amp man um are you running these in stereo yes oh very cool yeah so you're getting you're feeling it all right yeah, yeah, yeah. On stage. It's, great. it's like yeah it's totally selfish cool. <laughs> it's like yeah i want to hear me yeah, yeah. Totally. well i mean it's hard to play a show if you can't yeah, hear yourself yeah. of course you i don't know i did it for 30 years and yeah. also hearing is a lot different than actually feeling it too yeah that's, like, yeah, that's, yeah. Why I love that's what it's kind of doing it's just like it's almost like a side filter no matter which way i'm turning i'm always like getting yeah, the other totally. feel of it yeah all right so pedals you've incorporated some some pedals but uh, i mean you guys are getting so many tones with not a lot of stuff. Like, well, uh, I would, I mean, again, it, yeah, it's like, uh, I found this, the Caverns one, I guess Dunleavy, uh, and I just, like, that's, it's just like whenever I'm, like, if I'm demoing and I'm like, okay, blah, 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 now it gets a shimmery part, this pedal every time, and so now it's just, it's like full time. No, does it like, um, cause I know it's a two-sided pedal, is yeah, it yeah. one where like, it's got a latch, like a hold feature where it'll like shimmer out and keep going or like, No, you can set the length just make shimmer it, okay, and it's, so. you know, I, I play it kind of subtle. Like I like it, like I want it to, just cause I'm, I'm so busy picking that if I, if the delay is too long, everything runs on itself. Yeah. So it's just, I want it just enough so you hear the tail of it. Um, the delay, okay. So then this delay though, you can't uh, tap, there's no tap tempo. So but you can kind of dial it to your You songs. can dial it in, but I don't feel like bending over that often. So uh, I got this one with Tap Tempo and Avalanche Run, Earthquaker. Um, to solve that problem, sure. Yeah, and uh, both these are like, now they're tried and true, like kind of need them. Um, the proof, yeah. I, then I can combine, like I can Tap Tempo. See, that's where it gets really fun, is put, running them well, together. Well, that's what, yeah, yeah, I run them together and it just turns into a, yeah. beautiful. Exactly, yeah. and that's, again, like usually a texture that like, it's a default sort of like, okay, this guy's picking here, this guy's picking here, something has to fill it right. up. So yeah. It's funny, it almost makes a guitar, to me, sound more like a synthy. Oh, sure, yeah. You know. And now, I mean, also we're like, Nate, who's playing bass, is, is covering a lot more. He's got triggers Effects and synths and stuff, and, stuff. Sure. and Corey is doing all that stuff like live. He's got all his stuff through. So we're overcompensating, I think. But, it's yeah. fun. No, it's it's fun. fun, it's so much uh, beautiful Also, sound. like, live, we've been using Ernie Ball, like, total shout out like on demand or command to send us we're like we need a new volume pedal i was running two for a while just because like you know you want to whatever and then again i didn't it's just too lazy <laughs> but yeah so we're like a lot of the songs like this song is dependent on the swell you know what i mean totally. so, yeah and yeah, yeah I, I heard your sound check and even in the intro yeah the fading, it's just so beautiful yeah. you know it's just extra control and then how much are you using the holy grail does that get kicked on quite a bit Holy Grail is a sort of backup reverb, just because this guy's yeah. already shimmering. This guy's got a reverb too that he's pretty low. I usually use this just for the tempo or the delay, but um, the amps have a little bit of reverb already. Like Ar it's, already it's on. almost yeah. just like it's like if I want a little boost, but I don't want a, you know, like the the keyboardy shimmer part of it. Right. So it's he has a function. It's it, it's sort of the same as the fat boost, like. You don't know. I don't know if anybody else had noticed if I'm hitting or not. And if you do, I think I had the settings incorrect. So, yeah, it's just like maybe just so I, I'm like, okay, this part is just because I probably just dig in anyways naturally. Sure. Yeah. I, anyway, anybody does. And so yeah. So is the fat boost just kind of coming on for when you need more? It's just. I mean, it's like yeah, but it's really not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like there's not a ton of drive. It's not like a. You're not nope. using it as like a no, no, no. Or something. Yeah. It was uh, just like uh, a buddy recommended it. Just like a. 
I needed that. Like I was again leaving in two days, and he's just like, "Here, try this thing." Yeah, yeah. And I did. Now it's been on my pedal board for six years. That's a good friend. And then uh, the the special cranker. Um, how are you using that? That was a. Uh, I have like such an affinity for big dinosaur junior fan, and uh, the band kind of doesn't let me. But I would do like more kind of loud. Uh, you know, one of those harmonizing solo shit. Like, I was in a hair metal. Let's yeah, put it that yeah. way. So, uh, you know, all my, they're like, you can't just have a rap pedal and you can't just have a, I forget what's the last one I had. It Tube was Screamer or something. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it, well, it, didn't, it reminds me, he does have one, doesn't he? I think he's dead. Yeah. Evan like, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see the settings because I don't hear you guys getting very distorted. No, you know? it, it's like the same thing. There's just a couple times. But I, yeah, this one is a uh, Earthquaker again. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Um, Good every company. Time. Good yeah, dudes. every time. Yeah, whatever studio we were in, a uh, Arc Studio in Omaha, and just you know, build, uh, building the records. It's like they just pull out every pedal, and the most of them were Earthquaker. So I kind of just fell in love with. Yeah, they make like, incredible yeah. fun stuff, man. Yeah. Well, Dan, it's been an absolute honor and a privilege to cool, meet you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for interest. everything that you've done for for sure. music. I mean, that had to have been wild, right? Like, were you guys aware of this swell that was happening after? No, I mean we we had no we didn't even want to be in a band anymore. Um, and then it was made aware to us that somebody cared. And then it turns out like it had been like 15 years, and we're all dads now, and all get along better. I think like whatever. Oh, it's so hard to tour in your 20s, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. We're like you know we're all like eating so much shit at home, raising kids and stuff that it's so easy now to like tour. You're like okay, cool. Like okay. yeah, it's my turn to be crabby. It's his turn now. Yeah. <laughs> Totally well, get it. Now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, again, thank you so much, yeah, and I really appreciate it. Awesome, thanks. All right, now we're a little further downstage with Steve, but I also wanted to uh, bring out Mike really quick because he's the hardest working man in show business. Because you guys aren't only playing in alternate tunings, you're playing yeah. in different alternate we're, tunings. So yeah, Mike and I both tour with three guitars each, and we're in different tunings pretty much every song. We actually technically have more tunings and songs because we're almost always in different, different tunings. tunings. Yeah. Jeez, dude. It's yeah. ridiculous. Are, yeah. are you just... It's constant. exhausted. It's yeah. like constant uh, core, like the choreography to like make a show happen is just it's constant. And how many? It, honestly, how many times have you screwed up? <laughs> oh, I screwed one up last night. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's no way I can. I, yeah, 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 it's yeah. ridiculous. Well, this is only, so about my he, he tunes two guitars every song, and then on almost every song he comes out and he's doing keyboards or percussion or singing. So he's in the band and the guitar tech and works harder than everybody combined. Yeah. That rules. Yeah, and like Mike was saying, um, you're basically having to build, they're running these ideas by you and you're yeah. saying, ah, let's let's do this song, this song, and this song it's so actually, we can keep it. It's actually pretty funny, yeah. Like, I, I can veto a, a set list if I have to. Like, you know, they'll come to me with a set list and be like, that just doesn't work. <laughs> Man. Well, hey, we appreciate what you're doing, making these guys sound great every night. So oh, yeah. thank you so much. Like zone. All right, Legend. Steve. So yeah. you don't you don't have a ton of gear no, out with you. You I have this don't. beautiful bound telly. What's the story with this guy? Yeah. So this is uh, an elite telly that I don't think they make anymore. Uh, discontinued in 2019. I bought this for um, LP2. So when we were making our first like post reunion record, uh, I bought this in 2016, I think. And it's it's a gorgeous instrument. This is my favorite guitar. Yeah, I would play with three of these if I had them. Totally. <laughs> so. Yeah. I love the belly mm. scoop. Yeah. The noiseless pickups are so nice, yeah. especially for what you guys are doing. It's great. Yeah, um, so this is my number one. This is what I'll play, like never meant on, like this. Sure. You know, yeah, some of those LP1 tracks are cool. all Telecaster driven. Yeah. And then as a backup, you have this JM, right? Yeah, so I have three guitars. Um, the ja So I have Jazzmaster, Jaguar, and Tele, and I kind of use the longer neck for like the drop C sharp, drop D tunings. This is mid range, and then the Jaguar is like higher end. Stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, because that's going to be a little shorter neck, shriller sound yeah, too. So yeah. like, yeah, it might. Yeah, so um, I noticed that you have. The... <laughs> I don't <laughs> yes. like that. So, uh, so it's uh, this and the Jaguar both. Um, the off. guitar people will be mad at me, but yeah, I don't use some of the the jumping between. I like just like the standard yeah. setup, and um, I got this guitar used for five hundred bucks when we started oh, wow. the original reunion, and I love it. It sounds great, but it's not fancy in any way. It's yeah. just very durable. That's killer. Yeah. Man, right on. Have you done any modifications to either of these guitars? No. <laughs> no. no. And I've seen the channel. Like, I'm, I'm unfortunately, I'm not a gear guy. Like, I don't know a ton about all the pickups and everything. I'm just like, I, I know how to play and I know what I like and I mess with tunings and sound, but I'm not really a gear nerd. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it takes all kinds, man. Um, you're playing twins. Yes. Um, as opposed to deluxes. Do you have a 
What friends is this? Just like what you? Yeah, have, I mean or? that's like what I have at home. This is kind of the classic sound sure. of American football in my mind from the original record. Big, Although loud, clean. Yeah, don't tell Fender, but the first record I actually technically was playing a Marshall 8080 valve state. Was oh what, really? <laughs> yes, that was the amp I owned when I was a teenager. Totally so, get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So man, um, okay, so. Two, are you running stereo? No, it's just a backup. Just a backup, yeah. gotcha, okay, yeah. Well, that checks out. And then, pedal-wise, yeah, you guys are doing simple. so much for so little, it's wild. Yes. But so, Dueling Dispatch Masters, which is very dueling cool. Dueling Dispatch Masters, um, shout out to Earthquaker, they gave us those. So, the main one I use is for reverb. Just give it a little sound. Um, and then the other one I use, pretty sparingly, it's got delay as well, which just gives it a little more. Very subtle. Yeah. yeah, and occasionally I'll do them simultaneously, but only when I'm trying to get like a big get like there. build yeah. effect. Swell, big time. Yeah. So how are you using the emissary and then the tube screamer? I didn't expect. Yeah. And I also kind of expected you guys to have some compression. No compression. <laughs> no compression. Um, the tube screamer. So it's yeah. The Ivan has tube screamer. I'm using. Oh, that's like. As a, yeah, it's basically it's not even much louder. It's just a little grit. This yeah. is. We're just the very, texture. Yeah, this is the most modest amount of grit. Um, and then this is just signal boost. Oh, That's right. it. Yeah. yeah, and then a volume pedal, which we use a lot for like fade in and out stuff. Sure, you guys are very swelly. Yes, a lot of swells, but very simple setup. Yeah. Well, hey, man, uh, I love what you do. I've always loved it. I'm so excited Cheers. that you're a band again. Congrats on the house. I think that Thank is so you. cool. Yes. We're not I under, hope that becomes. We're in real estate now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you need to buy a house, maybe uh, talk to these guys, but yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Stay tuned for more rig rundowns, uh, video lessons, all that fun stuff. See you guys later.